This tutorial is going to cover trimming and welding in CorelDRAW. So as you know, when I'm selected on an object, my property bar will show me options relating to that particular object. However, if I'm selected on more than one object, and I do that by holding down my shift button and selecting additional objects, I get new options on my property bar. Weld, trim, intersect, create boundary. Let's go over a couple of these. Welding two objects together will make them into one object. You can really see that happening in wireframe. Here if we undo that, you can see the difference it made. Let's go back to enhanced view. It matters the order in which you select your objects. Your new object will have the properties of whichever object was the last object to be selected. So if I have my blue square with the purple outline selected, and then I hold down my shift button to select my yellow circle with a green outline and then weld them together. My new object is yellow with a green outline. Let's undo that. If you select the objects in reverse, so the last object you select is the blue square with the purple outline, your new object will be blue with a purple outline. Let's undo that again. Also, your objects do not need to be overlapping or touching in order to weld. So you can weld these two together and they are one object, which you can see in the object manager, they have become one object. Now let's go over trim. The trim option will trim one object out from another. Whichever is the last object that is selected is going to be the one that's trimmed. So this time I'll go ahead and hold down my shift button and then select my triangle. And it's cut out of my triangle. Intersect will make a new object from the overlap portions of two shapes. The new object will have the properties of the last shape that you select. So this time I selected my circle last and my object is yellow with a green outline. If I select my star last, let me hit intersect and move that off to the side so we can see. Now my new object is orange with a pink outline. I'm going to skip these next three options here. They're just variations of the trim option. Let's go ahead and look at the create boundaries. Create boundary will make a new shape that is all the shapes that I have combined. So I can grab all of these together and click on create boundary and it makes one new shape that is all of the shapes together. This is most commonly used for doing a print and cut. So if I were making my design in Corel to print, it would print out all of these shapes and I would grab everything, create boundary and apply my cut line to that largest shape. So it would print it and cut it. Now let's go over the difference between grouping and welding. Let's look at these two images down at the bottom. This image right here, if we expand it out, you can see is made of a black curve, an orange curve, a white curve, and a bunch of yellow curves. The second object is made just one of each curve, black, orange, yellow, and white. That has become, in this one, the yellow pieces have been welded together. Let's ungroup these two images.
You can see in this one that I can select each of the yellow pieces separately, while in this one, I cannot grab them individually because they are all welded as one. I'm going to grab all of the yellow objects in the first image and group them together. Now I cannot click on them individually. I can grab a color from my palette and drag it over to one of these pieces and I can change the color of just one. I would not be able to do that on this side. There's all one piece together. Let's go ahead and make these all one color again. Let me show you too, if I put a gradient on all of my yellow pieces at once, just gonna go ahead and choose a fountain fill. It has added an individual fountain fill to each one of these shapes. Well, if I do that to the one where they're welded, you can see that it just has one fountain that goes all the way across. Let me go ahead and make this solid again. If I add a fountain using my interactive fill tool, I can also get the same look here. But I still have control if I ungroup these individually. I could take one piece and adjust it separately, that fountain fill to it. So now if I have an object like this one on the right where this is all one piece, but you want them to be separated, simply click on the object and then go to Object, Break Curve Apart. Now you can see in my Object Manager has broken all of these into separate pieces so I can click each one individually. This works perfectly for an object like this where there are no holes cut out, any of, out of any of these bars. Let's look at the orange pieces orange piece. See how there are holes or shapes cut out of them? If I break this object apart, it will also break up those little holes. So I'll have this piece plus this piece and this piece. So something definitely to keep in mind. Let's go over a few real life situations where you may use the trim and weld tools. Here is a design with a tiger and the words go tigers. Right now, the tiger is behind the text. If I want the tiger to look like it's jumping over the words with his back paws behind the text and his front paws in front of the text, I'm going to use my trim tool. First, I'm going to copy and paste a tiger on top of the first. Edit, copy, edit, paste. Oops. I copied something else. Let me click on my tiger. Edit, copy, edit, paste. So now you can see on my object manager, I have a group of 20 objects, which is my bottom tiger, followed by my text, and then another tiger on top of it. Then I will draw a square over the left side of the tiger. Then I'm going to trim the top tiger using my rectangle. So my rectangle selected, hold down my shift button to also select my top tiger, then hit trim. Now I can delete my rectangle. So what I have is a full tiger on the bottom, then my text, 
And then on top of the text, there is half a tiger. You can see that I have a tiny hairline of black that is visible. I will simply ungroup this top tiger half and use my shape tool to take this left line here and drag it over so there's a little bit of overlap. So I'm clicking on this line with my shape tool, making it a curve and dragging it over a bit so there's a little bit of overlap. Now we don't see that little black hairline anymore. This is a great design for printing of any kind, but not for vinyl cutting as there are overlapping shapes. Let's do another example that would be vinyl ready. Here I have two images from Action Illustrated's collection. The purse and the dog. Let's say I want to put this spotted dog into the purse so it's peeking out. So let's just first move the dog over on top of the purse. And I'm going to size and rotate him so that he fits in there. So I'm just eyeballing this to make it look as though he's peeking out between the handles. So what I need to do is get rid of this butt back here. So let me first ungroup him. Let's take a look at this guy. It looks like the spots are all welded together. And this white piece is a solid piece. And then what looks like a black outline is actually a black silhouette shape. Let me change the color of the spots so we can really see them clearly from the silhouette shape. I'm going to use this white piece to trim out the other objects. Let's start with the spots. I click on the white shape, hold down my shift button, and then select my red spots and then hit trim. Perfect. Then let's trim the black silhouette shape. Click on the white piece, hold down my shift button again, select the black piece, and then trim. I can now delete the white shape altogether. The last thing I need to get rid of is this thin little black piece at the top. I'm going to make a rectangle and use it to trim away my black shape. Trim. And then I'm just going to use my shape tool to edit and tweak these nodes. I'm going to delete these and then edit my curve down a little. Now it looks like the dog is peeking out of the purse. If I'm going to be printing this, I am finished at this point. However, if I need to vinyl cut this, I need to do a little more. If we look at this in wireframe, you can see that the dog is overlapping with the purse pieces. So let's fix that. 
I'm going to ungroup the purse. And then I'm going to use the silhouette shape of the dog, this piece right here, to trim out the colored pieces of the purse. The beige piece. So now you can see that it's been cut where the dog is. The gray piece. The gray pieces. It looks like there's two. Trim that away. And we'll do the same for this one. And the brown piece here. Just trim. Once we have done that, then all we need to do is weld our two black pieces together. This piece here and the piece of the purse. We'll weld those together. Now if we view this in wireframe, you can see that there's no overlapping shapes. We could vinyl cut this design now. And that is how you use your trim and weld features in CorelDRAW.